Okay. So, how about when we have an equation that is not in standard form? It's the same thing. We just need to fix that up a little bit. So, let me bring the paper that we used before to discuss the standard form of the ellipse. One that is a, a horizontal major axis and the vertical major axis. Okay? Just remember, horizontal major axis, the x squared has the bigger a. Okay? And the vertical major axis, the y square, has the bigger a. When we look for the full side, that is. Okay? So, here, we don't have the a and the b as a denominator. So, all we need to do is simply take this equation and make that constant 196 into a 1. And so, to do that, we're going to multiply its reciprocal, 1 over 196, and do the distributive property. So this constant now becomes a 1. So that was an easy fix. But how about if we distribute the 196 with a 49? Well, let me use the calculator to make my life easy. <laughs> so 196, is it divisible by 49? I hope. It says here, yes, it goes in four times. So, okay. So that 49 cancels out itself to reduce 196 four times. So x squared over 4. Well, there's a 4 coefficient. That means 4 reduces 196 49 times. So y squared over 49. That was not too bad. Now, that is in standard form, and I personally prefer to write that in an exponential form. So we got x squared over square root of 4 is 2. So base 2 raised to 2. Plus y squared over square root of 49 is 7. So 7 squared becomes 49. And I could see right away that the y square has the bigger number, so that's going to be the a. So a is 7, b is 2. Now c, how do you find the c? Well, remember the formula is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. Okay, so if I square root everything to solve for c, you go c is equal to a squared minus b squared, the entire difference squared. And so if I substitute in the numbers, remember the a is now the 7. So that's 49 minus 4. 49 minus 4 is, of course, square root of, what is that, 45? And that same simplifies to become, what is that, 5 times 9, 5 times 9. So 9 comes out as a 3, square root of 5. And 3 times the square root of 5, well, I could use a calculator. Let's see. Square root of 5. That's about 2.24 times the coefficient 3. That's approximately 6.7. 6.7. So approximately 6.7. Okay? So since the y square has the bigger number, which that becomes, it's going to be a, it's going to be a, a vertical major axis. So, coordinate is 0 and 7, 2, 4, 6, and 7, 2, 4, 6, and negative 7 over there. So, 0 and positive 7, 0 and negative 7. And my co-vertices are 2 and 0, right there. Then on the left side, negative 2 and 0. And I'm going to go ahead and sketch my per ellipse, I mean. And what's my focus? Approximately 6.7. 2, 4, 6, somewhere, we right there somewhere. And the coordinate for that full side is, of course, 0 and square root of 3, square root of 5. I like to leave it like that as a radical. Over here, that's going to be 0 and negative 3, square root of 5. So I'm going to list all my answers. So my vertex or vertices are coordinate 0 and plus and minus 7. My co-vertices are, are positive and negative 2 and 0. And my foci, their coordinates are 0 and plus or minus 3 square root of 5. And that's my answer. Now, why don't you try this guy? Now remember, 
all this time the coefficients were perfect square, now we have a 15. Hmm, so let me try a little chili pepper to indicate that this is going to be a little spicy to deal with. Okay, you try that one. Okay, so first of all you said let's make this a standard form. And to do that, all we need to do is get rid of the constant 375 on the right side of the equation by multiplying its reciprocal, 1 over 375, so that that becomes, simplifies to 1, 1. So that's good. That's an easy fix right there. Okay. Now, when we distribute the 175 to a 25, let me use a calculator here. It says, is, is 20, 375 divisible by 25, I hope? It says, yes, it goes in 15 times. Okay, well, if that goes in 15 times, then 15 must go into 375 25 times. Okay, there we go. Now, here's the tricky part. How do you write that in a standard form with an exponential, A or a B? First of all, you know, let it be known that the A should be a 25 or 5 squared, right? Well, let me do it that way, my preferred way, x squared over now. What is a 15 in a square, square form? Well, I always I keep asking, like over here, what's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of 49? 7. What's the square root of 15? Just square root of 15. <laughs> but I wanted to show you that way because it kind of gets confusing. What's the square root of 25? It's 5. And then square comes back to 25. There. Now that's my way of standard form, but the books may request it this way. So let's identify the A, B, and the C. The A is the bigger number, okay, which is the 5. The B is a smaller one, but it's a square root of 15. Well, out of curiosity, let's find out what's the square root of 15. So square root of 15, that's approximately 3.87. 3.87. At least so I know where to go on the coordinate plane. And now how do you find the C? The C is the square root of A squared minus B squared. So the A squared is back to this again. It's 25 minus 15. And 25 minus 15 is of course square root of 10. And that's as far as it goes for simplifying, but what is that approximately? So I get an idea where it is on the coordinate plane. Square root of 10 is about 3.16. So let's say about 3.2, shall we? There. So now I could start graphing. Since the major axis is on the y-axis, here we go. Uh, what do we need here? 5? Yeah. So let's do it this way. 2, 4, 6, so 5 is over here at 0 and 5, then that also means 2, 4, 5 over here as well at negative 5. And what's the vertices? Well, it's an A, uh, I mean, it's a square root of 15, approximately 3.87. So 2, 4, so let's say over here somewhere and mark it as square root of 15 and 0. And then 3.87 is over here somewhere at negative square root of 15 and 0. And now I could draw the ellipse, something like that, more like an egg. <laughs> and where's, where are the foci? Well, it's around 3.2, so 3 point, there's 3, 2, somewhere around there. And what's the coordinate for that? It's at 0 and, you got it, square root of 10. That's the way I like to write my answer. So 3.2 somewhere over here. Once again, 0 and negative square root of 10. Okay, and if they say list it all out, then, then you go like this. Then the vertices are, again, 0 and plus and minus 5 along the vertical axis. Co-vertices are, I think I need a new pen, huh? Is at square root of 15, so plus or minus square root of 15 and 0. And the foci, their coordinates are located as 0 and plus or minus Square root of 10. There it is. All right, go get them. But before you go get them, <laughs> I just realized that when I saw the camera, you couldn't see what was down here. 
So let me write that over here. And the foci, it's already on the graph, but I wanted to make it official, is zero and plus or minus square root of 10. Okay, so there's vertex, vertices, covertices, and foci. Now go get them.